As a mother, it is very difficult when we think that our child is being harshly treated. It's just a natural instinct to want to go in and protect and, and smooth things out right away because I believe that that is one of our um, giftings as a mom to protect our children and to nurture them and to provide an environment in which they thrive. It is particularly difficult when you see an injustice being done to your son or your daughter when it is really perpetrated by your spouse or you believe that your spouse is being unjust. This can be very delicate in terms of your relationship with your husband and your relationship with your children. So it needs to be approached with great care. The fact that you have already determined that it's harsh may um, present some challenges. Consider that it may not necessarily be harsh, but there might be something else going on underneath, and it deserves to be understood. In order for it to be understood, the first step is to be clear on what your thoughts and what your feelings are about the behaviors that are being extended towards your son. To enter a dialogue that is somewhat um, unpredictable with, with what you're thinking and feeling can only create a sense of threat and probably a, a lack of safety for you. So being clear on how you think and feel about the behaviors towards your son um, will be very, very uh, pivotal in your conversation with your husband. Second, once you're clear about what you think and feel, Imagine that there might be something else going on for your husband, that something that's important that he wants your son to understand or to be equipped to deal with life with. So what that can do is to lead to curiosity. And when you approach your husband, if you can approach him with curiosity about his behaviors versus judging his behaviors as being harsh or wrong, the outcome of that conversation will probably be more positive because in between the lines of what you present to your husband, curiosity has a way of opening up dialogue as opposed to shutting it down like judgment does. You can open the conversation with your husband by saying something like this. Let's say his name is Tom and you can say, uh, Tom, there has been something that I've been noticing that is really concerning to me and it's something between you and Johnny. When this happens and you fill in the blank, I feel this and I am concerned or I'm afraid this will happen. Do you ever think about that? And you can share those types of thoughts with your husband. Again, it's not about judging his behavior, but asking him to dialogue and be curious about what's motivating him, as well as giving your heart a voice by expressing what you're concerned about and what you're afraid of. Now, during this conversation, it's really important for you to express um, your desire to be a teammate with your husband when it comes to parenting. That if you guys square off like adversaries, in the end you both will feel defeated when it comes to parenting your son. So affirm your desire to be your husband's teammate, to do the best job possible that you can with parenting, and, and to operate as a team. So one of the things that you might suggest is to read about what's expected for this age that your, your son is. Say if he's 14, say if he's 16. What is, what is age appropriate behavior? Next, you could even suggest that you ask your son to be part of this dialogue. This is the core issue. When you don't call, when you're gonna be out past curfew, it is unnerving for us because we are afraid so-and-so might happen. And you can actually reproduce that same kind of conversation with your son, asking him to be a team, team member as well, and learn, coming up with solutions to the issues that seem to be driving the harsh exchange between your husband and your son. To ask your son to be part of this dialogue might be really difficult for him, especially if the environment or the relationship has been very tense. 
So um, it might require you to go to your son separately and just go to him in a place of compassion with an attitude of compassion and curiosity of his insight or his feedback as to how he perceives the relationship between um, him and his father. Again, I would like to caution you about a very common mistake that we see with the couples that we work with. Many times mothers will either somehow apologize for dads or somehow kind of make up for dad as a way of trying to softening or smooth out the tension and the, and the rough path that is between the son and the husband. I really want to caution you not to do this because again it creates power struggles between a husband and a wife, a husband and a son, and sometimes even a mom and a son. So instead, if you could just maintain an attitude of curiosity and compassion, stating, yes, I feel sad when that happens, yes, it hurts when I see it hurting you, but I also know that something else must be driving dad to do what he does, and that we can actually be curious about that. If you can present it like that, I really believe that it would be much more productive in the end, and will and, and, will, and has the greatest capacity or the potential of bringing healing and some kind of cohesion back to the family as opposed to trying to smooth it over or apologize it away. Now, there might be a time where you can even encourage your son to go to your husband and have this dialogue just between the two of them. You might even suggest that if they need an intermediary, somebody, an outside observer to help the process along, that they would access a professional or a minister or a very wise and um, honored friend that you have. In that case, um, I do believe that if that happens, that restoration of the family and great relationships are within the future of that family and of your family. And I wish you well.